Hi, good evening once again. It's Friday evening and time for Hold No Bars. Let me just take my volume down. Great, Hold No Bars. And you take your volume down when you are calling in. Tonight, I'm going to have to speak once again for quite a little while. Lots of news this week, all about elections. Just over five months from now, we are going to have general and regional elections according to our dear beloved president david granger you know i'm told that um, we cannot say things critical against the president we have to even though he's illegal now we have to still say loving words about him uh, ghana national broadcasting authority has been after broadcasters who they feel are not being balanced enough and yours truly has um, been one of supposedly the guilty ones and freedom radio this year this week has been fined seventy five thousand dollars because yours truly has said that um, there are plans afoot to fix elections and so forth, right? So I've been fine for that. Of course, that will be challenge. Um, so we're gonna have to be very careful. But tonight, let us start with those very important announcements for this week. First, Mr. Granger, the usurper, the legal, well, the person who illegally occupying the position of the presidency of our country, has announced that March the 2nd would be the earliest date when elections would be held. That's his initial statement. And after getting a lot of flack, and I understand there could have been threats also from the AB countries about visas being pulled from officials, and then the next day there was a clarification, and Granger is saying that March the 2nd will be the date for general and regional elections. He's still leaving the door open because he says he has to be given more information from GCOM, GAN Elections Commission. So we got that, the last 48 hours from Granger, and, and I'm saying Granger because, you know, Granger has lost the respect to be called president in my view. Why? He was elected, duly elected, yes, but the fact that you're now going to upturn the constitution and you're going to arrogate onto yourself the powers of the presidency, I can't, I can't, I can't call a dictator president. Very difficult for me to call a dictator president. So if MTV is hauled over the course by the Ghana National Broadcasting Authority, then I'm sure yours truly might be off the air soon. But we still have uh, internet radio. We still have different social medias which I will appear I will appear here, there, and everywhere like old MacDonald, you know? Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here, moo, there, moo, everywhere, moo-moo. We will appear. We will appear and certainly can't shut us down. We're going to be very responsible, extremely responsible, as we've always been. And especially now against an illegal regime, then we're going to he even have to be more aggressive but responsible. Well, last week we heard that uh, Karen Cummings, Dr. Karen Cummings, had to be hospitalized because of the trauma she suffered after being held hostage by the hooligans that were outside of. And I have, I have a T-shirt. Uh, um, I'm starting a hooligan campaign. Uh, T-shirts are available from yours truly in different places. Um, 
they were ready this afternoon. Unfortunately, grandfather duties prevented me from collecting them. So it's a white t-shirt and you will see a black mark and then a white imprint. It's called a reverse print on that hooligan. So there's going to be a hooligan campaign. I'm a hooligan, you're a hooligan. You know, BJ is a hooligan, AFL is a hooligan, right? So this hooligan campaign will start. Um, David Green just said, we're hooligans outside of Pegasus. But Karen Cummings, who was supposedly held hostage and who um, we attempted to overturn her car, according to David Granger. Um, she is jetting off to, the New, to New York to have a town hall meeting at Medgar, Edgar Mevers College. I may have mixed up the um, Among the diaspora, big town hall meeting. In fact, I think she's already in New York. The, the meeting is supposed to happen tomorrow. This was a traumatized lady. I guess she's going to talk about the trauma we hooligans um, inflicted on her because we tried to hold her hostage, overturn her car. Had it not been for the riot squad removing us and clearing a path, she would have been in imminent danger. Clear and present danger, I think uh, people say. So she's off. And um, so we now have a date. We now have a date. But tonight, tonight there were some new developments so this e this afternoon and even tonight but before i go into those and i'm going to play a, a few minutes of a press conference held by attorney at law says gunraj and former minister robson ben who are two of the three commissioners the other one being bibi shadiq that represents the PPPC, the political opposition at GCOM. So give me two minutes and I'll play that video, then I'll come in and do some commentaries on that video. But uh, the date was announced. We understand that a lot of pressure has been exerted. Uh, the international community, except CARICOM, I remember last week we talked about uh, Guy Exit. Well, I got a lot of suggestions from you guys and the, the campaign to get Guyana to withdraw from CARICOM will be labeled Guy Exit CARICOM. The person says we have to make it pellucidly, pellucidly clear. Clearly, clearly, clear. Guyana Exit CARICOM. Guy Exit CARICOM, right? So um, we mentioned that last week. So we have two campaigns, the hooligan campaign that will start um, hooligan not being behaving like hooligans as David Granger says we are but it's a tag which we were given um, and it takes one to know one so that campaign and the guy exit CARICOM campaign will start so we're talking about um, these developments and um, a very strong statement came out this week from the Commonwealth Secretariat the Commonwealth uh, Secretariat right and the head of the Commonwealth Secretariat is Baroness Patricia Scotland, a Dominican lawyer, very brilliant young lady in the mold of Dame Eugenia Charles from Dominica. And um, the Commonwealth, which represents a hundred and something odd countries that were and are under the uh, Queen's rule, that's the Commonwealth, right? issued a powerful statement and in this statement they use unambiguous constitution imperative to hold elections unambiguous continuous imperative meaning that without doubt no amount of misunderstanding misinterpretation unambiguous constitutional duty imperative meaning duty to hold elections. So she issued, not only I understand that um, Barnes, S uh, Scotland um, issued that statement on behalf of the Commonwealth, I understand she called leading officials in Guyana, including leading officials of the Guyana Elections Commission. 
she offered help by the Commonwealth to run these elections too because of all the mistrust from all sides. See, I understand help was offered to run these elections. Because the Commonwealth and us, we have very similar laws. We have very similar systems. They are moved slightly away with the hybrid of a presidential and Westminster parliamentary system, slightly away. But generally, the laws are the same. And in fact, if you are a Commonwealth citizen residing in any Commonwealth country legally for one year, you are entitled to register and vote in that country. And I've mentioned before, when I lived a year in England, uh, doing my master's up in Manchester, uh, I did get registered to vote in the European Union elections because of my being a Commonwealth citizen. Commonwealth. So that provision is replicated in most of the laws of the Commonwealth countries. So, Barnes Scotland, I understand, had some direct communication with leading officials in Guyana and made it quite clear about the need to have free and fair elections in Guyana. And that unambiguous constitutional imperative to hold elections, right? Meaning that clear, no confusion, constitution states it's a duty to call the elections, David Granger. And after a lot of maneuvering, morning he came out and he said the earliest possible date is March the 2nd, then more pressure again. And the next day we heard him say definitely March the 2nd. So we're holding our breath, right? We're still holding our breath. Good. Um, and GCOM. Some developments within GCOM that are very, very alarming and of great concern. And one is the chief elections officer. Now, about three weeks ago, the chief elections officer had to be admitted to the Caribbean Heart Institute, CHI, and was in there for quite a few days. I understand he did apply for indefinite sick leave. Could you imagine this? <laughs> an employee, you have an employee and they're applying for indefinite sick leave. I said, wow, and being a former minister of labor, I said, how could a person apply for indefinite sick leave? So one would expect that if a person could be sick indefinitely, the employer has a right to seek medical advice to have that person be examined and be certified fit to come out to work at a certain time. You know, my father was a waterfront worker. He's been on the waterfront since 1947. And around 1968, 69, um, he had what was thought to be peritonitis, which is when the, um, the intestines, they would knot up and you don't have a bowel movement, right? And so old timers used to have a douche and they will try to, you know, soften the stool so you could have a movement. When they actually did cut him, they thought it was cancer. And so he had to go through a lot of tests. And he was retired as a stevedore, as unfit to work medically. And this is the norm. But could you imagine Lowenfield, who's a retired, retired person, not retired, but five times. Good. Hospitalized many more times and is applying to GCOM for indefinite sick leave, low in field. But I understand he came out on Tuesday to the meeting and he was very um, vociferous, some people may say boisterous on Tuesday, you know, shouting down commissioners. Could you imagine an employee shouting you down? But tonight we have two developing news. And let me now switch to a press conference held by Attorney at Law and Commissioner 
says Gunraj and former minister and GCOM commissioner Robson Ben. Kevin, hit that video, please. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you for attending this press briefing at very short notice. The urgency of this engagement is occasioned by a series of events that have occurred overnight and as late as this morning. That is to say, overnight we observed in the official gazette a publication from the Ghana Elections Commission in relation to the claims and objections period that is slated to commence on the 1st of October 2019 with a view of holding regional general elections at the stipulated time. Now, let me deal with that publication in the official gazette first. A perusal of the schedule, the second schedule of that order, which is dated the 26th of September 2019, and is issued under the hand of Justice Claudette Singh, Chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. In the second schedule at three, it details the entirety of the claims and objections period to be from the 1st of October 2019 to the 18th of November 2019. A quick calculation of that period and the number of days that comprise the same will show that it comprises a, uh, it contains a period of 49 days it was widely reported in the press coming out of the statutory meeting of the Ghana elections commission on the of tuesday of this week that it was agreed by the commission that the period to be allocated for claims and objections would be 35 days and that period would commence from the 1st of October 2019. Now, I don't proclaim to be the best mathematician, but it does not require any superior mathematical skills to see, to see that 35 days from the 1st of October would lead you to the 4th of October with both days being inclusive. So from the outset, it is everyone's guess as to where this 49 day period ending on the 18th of November 2019 came from. But my observation or our observation of this publication did not, uh, we did not remain silent on it. This morning, at the first opportunity, myself and my fellow commissioner, Ropes and Ben, who's with me today, engaged the chairman. Honorable Justice Retired, Madam Claudette Singh, on this issue, because this order is issued under her hand. She undertook to us to investigate the circumstances which led to this publication, this erroneous publication, appearing in the official Gazette of Guyana. And as I am speaking that this is a publication in the official Gazette of Guyana. Let me start by expressing my consternation that the official Gazette is considered to be notice to the world. It is a publication that in law is taken to be notice to the world. And if the Guyana Elections Commission which is responsible for this publication, will publish something so erroneous that will obviously engage the attention of all Guyanese and ostensibly the world, then why do we have to be faced with this? Can we, it only leaves us to imagine what happens with issues that may never see the light of day. But this publication in the official gazette is not the only surprising thing that we have seen today. During
during the course of this morning, we were met with a press release under the hand of the public relations officer, Ms. Yolanda Ward, which was purportedly issued today, which says GCOM's claims and objections exercise will commence on the 1st of October 2019. This very press release repeats the erroneous dates that are included in the Gazette, but it goes further. It seeks to specify, in fact, in bold, during this exercise, every person whose name appear, and that I'm reading it as it is, uh, grammatical errors are not mine, during this exercise, every person whose name appear on the preliminary list of electors, PLE, must visit the registration office in their respective area with their national identification card to verify their registration record in order to be included in the official list of electors. I want to label this hogwash before I go on anymore. This was never a decision taken by the commission either in whole or in part. In fact, it was not even a discussion that was had at the commission level. This can only be seen as an attempt to foist another version of house-to-house -house registration on the citizens of this country. But importantly, how did we arrive at this state as, at where we are? You would remember, ladies and gentlemen, that there was a case that was heard by the Honorable Chief Justice, Madam Justice Roxanne George, which dealt with the legality or otherwise of the conduct of the house-to-house -house registration process. The outcome of that case... Thank you very, very, very much. Let me just take down my volume and see if you are here. Great. Thank you very much. Attorney at Law and Commissioner Says Gunratch, GCOM Commissioner Says Gunratch. Uh, that was a press conference um, earlier this afternoon detailing two issues that surface in terms of releases from the Guyana Elections Commission. Now, there are two important things there. First, is that the claims and objections period that finally came out was listed as 49 days. So while they brought it up to October the 1st, the closing date remained as per that schedule I gave a few weeks ago. And says Gunraj is saying that nowhere at the commission did they make a decision and these um, this decision to have a period for claims and objection and what that period is, is not a decision of the chief elections officer. It's a decision of the commissioners. And say says, Commissioner Gunrad says, that they had agreed to 35 days. Madam Justice Claudette Singh undertook to investigate how this move from 35 days to 49 days, two weeks more than was decided by at GCOM. So this is a mystery, and we have to flag this mystery because just as how these mysterious releases and publications are coming out of GCOM, so we could have erroneous, he used the word erroneous, meaning wrong, um, not only wrong, but has elements in there of wrongdoing. Wrongdoing. So, if that could happen and we're now starting the process, what happens on March the 3rd and March the 4th of 2020? So, antenna are up, eyes are wide open, and I'll tell you what we're going to have to do. We have to take up Barnes. Scotland offer 
we have to get, like we did dec a decade ago, international people to be stationed permanently from now inside of GCOM. The second issue he raised is this issue of Yolanda Ward, and I've been on her case since she was appointed. I want to say illegally appointed because we had the chairman then, James Patterson, who was illegal. Anyway, she's holding the position. And under her hand, a publication came out saying that everybody who is on the PLE, that's the preliminary list of electors, must present themselves with their documents at the registration center. Now, nowhere, never happened, even on the Forbes Barnum. When a PLE comes out, you have to go and take your credentials to energy comes out. Once you appear on the PLE, it means you're already on the voters list. On the voters list. So all of a sudden, on the Yolanda Ward, you see creeping in a new criterion that persons must go and present themselves. Chief Justice George, as Commissioner Gunrad says, was quite clear. You can't take anybody off the list. You have to stay on the list. Nothing like that is in the law for you to present. GCOM can decide on forms of verification. And that's what the Chief Justice said, that the host to host that they conducted is just another form of verification. GCOM cannot impose this on the voter. So already, the bell was only sounded in the last 48 hours, confirmed in the last 24 hours. And already you see two wrong statements coming out of the Secretariat of GCOM. Madam Justice Claudette Singh, you are a full-time chairman. I know you took on this position after a considerable amount of um, suasion, moral suasion and persuasion from all parties, you know, to be on the list. And it's a taxing job, but you know, your country needs you at this time. Your country, Madam Justice Claudette Singh, needs you, as you have said when you swore in, to operate by the law. Operate by the law. And everybody and anybody who is attempting to do wrongdoing, you have to condignly deal with them via the law. So, Madam, Madam Justice Claudette Singh, um, this is on behalf of the people of Guyana who live inside our borders and the diaspora. Come on, we got to get these elections right. So this notice that uh, came out from GCOM under the hand of Yolanda Ward, right, calling for persons to present themselves is not contained in any law. The process and the system is preliminary list. Persons, political parties have an opportunity and this list is supposed to come out either on Sunday or Monday to peruse that list and if your name is spelled wrong, if uh, you see somebody who is dead and you can prove it, you can object, it's a claims and objection. A claim meaning a claim to go on the list. If your name is not on the list and you were registered before, you can go with, then you can go with your documents and make a claim to go on the list. If you have never been registered, and you're going to be 18 years of age as of December 31st, 2019, you have a right to make a claim to go on the list. So you have this preliminary list. And after the preliminary list, then you get a supplementary list, and then you get the final list. So this is the process. So this preliminary list is the first list which can be corrected, one, by a person who, whose name is not on, by that person going to the center and making a claim to go on the list. Two, 
And then when that person makes that claim, then the GCOM officials along with the party scrutineers will visit the person's home to verify that this person lives where they say they live, right? And then you have an objection. So let's say you know that um, one Carlos Miguel just arrived as a trader from uh, Venezuela and you know they had no connections with Guyana and they live at 18 Section C Bunbury Park next to you and you and all of a sudden this person's name is on the list and you could go and make an objection. So the political parties, uh, residents will have to be extremely vigilant when this list comes out to check it and to ensure that it has accurate information of persons who are legally entitled to vote. Now, you have had it. 24 hours after March the 2nd was confirmed as the date for elections, right, which would put it, which would put it almost a year after it was due because of the no confidence vote. What a shame on this administration. We're going to have these elections. And already, in the first 24 hours, you saw coming out of GCOM two erroneous statements coming out of GCOM. So, Commissioner says Conraj made it pellucid that at the commission level, they decided on 35 days for the claims and objections period. Here, when the order appeared in the Gazette, it says 49. And secondly, that nowhere did the commissioners agree that persons must present themselves to a GCOM office once the list comes out to verify the list. I'm opening up now the lines for your calls. I see uh, one person here on WhatsApp. Time to make heads roll, Mr. Nadir. They need to be replaced. I agree totally. We have no confidence in Lowenfield or Yolanda, and I want to add Myers. And we have experienced people who can run elections. And if you don't want the Guyanese, accept Baroness Patricia Scotland's offer and bringing people. Look, Trinidad could run elections similar to us. So Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Dominica, Antigua and Barbuda, Montserrat, St. Kitts, Nevis, Jamaica, right? or Belize, Bahamas. Bermuda, they're all systems similar to us, right? So, um, I agree with that texter that says, heads got the roll, replace them. Good, the lines are open now. All the lines are open, and um, I'm getting some thumbs up here on social media for the position. But you know, that's not Manzoon in this position. He's not brilliant. All we're doing is those who are representing you like the Sis Gonrages and the Ropes and Bands and the Bar Jagdios and the Irfan Alis, you know, and the Guilty Shearers, they're the ones who are really carrying this struggle. Hi, you're on the air. Hold no bars. Good night, man. Good evening. Um, I want to make comment. Go ahead. One is what you just talked about, the changing of dates. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The second one is this girl, Yolanda Ward. Mm -hmm. um, first thing, I want to talk about the date of elections. Mm -hmm. How the law mm -hmm. dates, unless there's a proclamation. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. That is a proclamation in writing and signed by the president himself. Thank you very much. 
um, and he's not the president, I don't know who can sign. Well, uh, you and know. Story. No, no, let me be careful on this. He's not the president of Ghana right now. Mm -hmm. Legally, the constitution, he peered on. Mm -hmm. He's a caretaker president. I don't know the constitution in Gobiando, mm -hmm. but he, the thing is, he has not signed a proclamation to this date. I agree with you. And therefore, the date is tentative to me. That's one. Good. So let me clarify though. Two, Miss Ward. Uh huh. And I see GCOM PNC commissioners making statements representing the commission. The commission consists of three opposition members, three and a chairman, and, and, and three PNC people. Right. The commission got to make at any proclamation or any letter that they can send to the press. All of them, it got to come from the commission, not an mm -hmm. individual. I see Alexander just said, with the commission saying, like, he's a big buy. Right. This lady got to be stringent and rigid. Right. Otherwise, or all, all, the, what I hear the call she, the iron lady, she can become lollipop lady. Uh-huh. She got to, this girl, should, this girl ain't qualified to be a PRO. Right. Right. I tell you, I know personally. Mm -hmm. I don't want to disclose her, but... She doesn't, she's not qualified to be a PRO. They just pin she inside of it. Mm. Um, so she, somebody writing the releases for her, you're telling me? No, no, no. She could write the release. That's simple language. But why say she does not have the authority to write that unless it is signed by the chairman of the commission. Mm -hmm. This thing is a commission. It's not an individual. The PRO can't make them kind of a statement. A, B, C is a commission. The commission comes... Okay, let me just take a pin here, right? Yeah. In terms of the... The days for claims and objections, my understanding is from very reliable source that the chairperson said what she signed had 35 days. Yeah, but she could recall right away, she, uh, she got to come on this, just like how you left on the TV, mm -hmm. she got to come on TV and say, look, I have signed a proclamation eh, for 35 days. How we come in the official gazette? She wanted change immediately. She right. to be hired on. She's the iron lady that said. Good. Okay, you can go ahead. Yeah, so she has to get this done. She has to see those decisions. Mm -hmm. Look, I can remember when I went in in 1980 under the PNC as the head of the department. Mm -hmm. I had to vote those parts in with all people's signature. Okay, and here, Aganga gave you a minute to wind down because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right? I just finish it. Sure, sure. Um, I had to write a letter to the former second and say, look, as head of the department, no document coming out of my department without my signature. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's official. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thanks a lot um, for that comment. And um, let me just see another comment coming through here at this time. It says, the Iron Lady is Iron Lady. Okay. Good. Hi, good evening. You're on the oh, air. Hi, Mr. Nadir. Wow, you got two second caller for the night, girl. <laughs> people might think I'm dialing you guys, you know. I'm sorry? People might think that I am dialing you. So maybe I better keep my hands up, my, you know, out. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, is GCOM chair responsible for what comes out of GCOM? Well, I would want to say yes and also the commission. All right, go ahead. But um, uh, everything needs to reshuffle there. It's mm -hmm. not, they're not wa working in the interest of Diana. They're working for the, this government. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Also, go ahead. Also, um, you guys are getting censored. They, yes. The, the, the Broadcasting Corporation should have a look at, there's um, a talk show called um, Nation, something Nation. Yeah. That was on a couple of nights ago. Mm -hmm. It was a freak show. I only watched for two minutes. How come nobody is paying attention to what those guys are saying? Yeah. And it's nothing, nothing what you guys think comparing to what's going on there. Great. And I hope Dr. Um, Jack Bell does not get pressured into making any illegal people legal again by blackmail. Thank you. I, Okay, and um, let's see what happens. Great. Okay, yes, I agree with the caller in terms of the censorship. The day when we had to appear, and I went with the station manager at Freedom Radio, there were um, a few persons from the PNC making some wild outlandish on um, uh, lack of evidence statement. 
threatening statements. We didn't hear up to now any one of them. Hi. Hi, good evening. Go ahead. Hello, good evening. Go ahead. I'm calling. Uh, I have a friend. And she said she checked her name on the voters list. Uh -huh. Her husband who has died, and mm -hmm. her son who has died, name is on the voters list. Okay. And she tell him and nobody says anything. Okay, what has to happen in that case, right? They should be um, a relative should take that. A person can take it too, right? But they have to have the original death certificate and present that to the GCOM office. Right? Okay, I uh, don't think she will do that. Because I but this is the challenge we have, right? Okay. If I go and I can make the objection, but I also got to prove that by presenting an original death certificate. And, and many times the family doesn't want this. Uh, my people dead and gone, man. Yeah, I'll try with them. No, 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 no. I tell her to go and make a complaint. Right. Good. But you can always follow up. You have my cell number two. You can always follow up. Right? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Nair. Okay, How go ahead. How are you doing? Not too bad. All right. I know you don't want to waste time. Uh, you know, 21 has got a program. The other night they had a program. With the, with the discourse going on, with people calling in and having explicit sexual discussion, mm -hmm. the Broadcasting Association on um, on Trina. Well, huh? yeah, I, I ain't got. Anyway, anyway yeah. you know, I, I got something to worry to you, right? Good, go ahead. From assessing the behavior pattern of the president within the last eight to nine months, right. relating to discourses within the with the media, mm -hmm. the amount of incidences in which he has reneged on his verbal commitment mm -hmm. has positioned him, him on mm -hmm. a stage mm -hmm. or under a spotlight in which will determine if the date for election mm -hmm. is just another delay or dilatory tactic. But now it has evolved into a higher and a more sophisticated stratagem. The sh in the short term or immediate results for naming the date could probably be for the opposition to become complacent mm -hmm. and abandon their hooliganistic protests mm -hmm. which seems to be smearing mm -hmm. the all is well in Guyana mm -hmm. image and mm -hmm. secondly retarding the sanctions threatened by the international community. Mm -hmm. Thanks lots, sir. Thank you. Okay. I'm getting some um, WhatsApp messages, so please let us take as many calls as we can to be short. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good, good evening. Um, if you could see the plan of the PNC, that they want to um, increase the African population by bringing in the Haitians and the mm -hmm. Nigerians mm -hmm. to sixty percent. So mm -hmm. when they combine the next election. Okay, I got to cut you off because I went through some analysis similar and Freedom Radio got fined 75000 So I have to cut you off, right? Sorry about that. Another call says, start lobbying for international body to hold elections because GCOM is in clear collusion with the illegal government. That's one. The other one here. Let's take a call. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Go ahead. I want to tell you something. Tell me. Uh, I don't know what real politicians want to fool people about. Your daughter, married Sharma. Okay, has no relevance whatsoever. Uh, Sharma with the government. He is part of APNU. Good. Next. Okay. Good. So let's keep it. I've cleared all too many calls on the cell phone. Right. Okay. Um, for those who are calling on the cell phone, we're doing a social media broadcast on the 681-9312 number. That's why I'm unable to take the calls there. So if you could divert to the two landline numbers that you see on the live, on the screen, uh, then you can get through, right? Because I'm doing a social media broadcast via the um, cell phone. Good? Okay. So let us keep it um, short and crisp. To the point, the point today is that while the president has announced, I shouldn't say the president, David Granger has announced March the 2nd, today GCOM has uh, issued one, an order, which is different from what the commissioners agreed on on Tuesday, and that's for 49 days instead of 35 days for the claims and objections. And secondly, an erroneous statement came out of GCOM that persons need to present themselves to GCOM office 
to verify um, that they're still here once the, the PLE, meaning the preliminary list of electors, comes out, right? And we saw Say Scott Rajanal save a few minutes at the end of the program to rebroadcast that from the mouth of a commissioner, a person who sat at the meeting on Tuesday. Good? We'll save a few minutes. Okay, let's take another message on Facebook. Good night, Mr. Nadir. It seems as though GCOM's secretariat is, com is compromised and is taking instructions from a political party because it's one thing after the next. Good? Okay, so um, if you have uh, a view on these, the two landlines, let me just make sure everything is clear. Good. The two landlines are open. The cell phone is on social um, media right now. And this broadcast goes all over. And I really want to thank all of you who, uh, after every program, come and give your views on and off the air. Uh, so not a, another person saying, uh, my, my glasses may need changing. That is, sir, my family and I, along with relatives from the USA, is viewing. Lovely, lovely, stay on the topic. Hi, good evening. Hold no bars, you're on the air. I would like to say two politicians, main party in this country, mm -hmm. would come together and unite in a wonderful country. Great. Thank you. Thank you, D. So that person called, I think, um, one of our regular calls calling for unity, and uh, um, we are one unity, but we can be united in our diversity too, right? Flowers in a garden are different, but all look great, smell good, and blossom under the same sunlight, the same watering, and in the same soil, right? Good. Hi, hello. Okay, sorry, I cut you off accidentally there. Um, so again, tonight, it's, it's heating up now, just about five months away. We are five months away from March the 2nd. We haven't seen, point made by one of the callers. Hi, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I have listened to all the comments and the suspicion that um, it's a reason in the opposition head mm -hmm. about the secretariat. Mm -hmm. That means that we take in the country, the citizen, and the world at large mm -hmm. into another frame of mind. Mm -hmm. Do we really need to do that, or do we need to come to some kind of consensus mm -hmm. or fix the law in Parliament mm -hmm. and then move forward? Mm -hmm. Because regardless of what, mm -hmm. in 2020, mm -hmm. I can see a serious problem arising. Great. All right? So the quest. Mm -hmm. To retain power or to remain in power or to gain power, mm -hmm. that is the ultimate goal. Right. And all the suspicions that are arising, we have to be realistic, we have to be humanistic. Mm -hmm. And the right thing to do is to use the period that the commission allow and fix some of those laws to fix that commission if there is question mm -hmm. or suspicion. Mm -hmm. And the parliament is the ultimate place to go and fix that. Okay. Thank That's you. my suggestion. If we want to be humanistic, I'm old, you old. What about the future of our children? The other has been in this mess for so long, mm -hmm. since I was a young boy growing up. Right. And I just pray from my heart that something comes together. Either the two parties make one, we, we become an American system, mm -hmm. and we just vote for president. We, we have two parties. But we, with this proportional representation thing, mm -hmm. is this right in our country? Okay. Let, let the individual ministers fight for the constituency and represent it, mm -hmm. and we all come together. We have a president who is accountable to all. We have different houses that control things. To me, we not going forward. Mm -hmm. All the wealth that was in existence, mm -hmm. it's still there, but now we turn our attention to oil. Mm -hmm. Are we going to misrepresent that well too. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing left to see in it all is our laws are erroneous mm -hmm. and we need to update them and correct them. 
we have arrived out of Britain way of governance mm -hmm. and Britain have updated their own, but we are still at the same place with the, a vague law. And it is up to this politician or that politician to explain what it means. Or a, a whole legal process which the ordinary man don't have the comprehensive skill. So we are in a place where we are misguiding our young generation. And okay, wrap up for me in 30 seconds, right? And our country will be in a mess. Thank you. So we got to be realistic and fix it. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'll take one caller, and then I have to go back to uh, the statement by Commissioner Cease and Attorney at Law Cease Gunraj. Okay, so great. So that one is clear. That one is clear. We've cleared all the calls for tonight. There's nothing on the WhatsApp um, screen. So tonight, um, we heard uh, two important statements from the PBPC commissioner. One, that the commission had agreed to 45 days, sorry, to 35 days, and the order came out as 49 days. Madam Justice Claudette Singh says she signed to 35, if we are told. And the second is that claims and objections period, that 49, sorry, that during the claims and objections period, once your name comes out on the list, you have to go to GCOM. Nothing like that exists in the law. So, Kevin, can we hit um, Commissioner and Attorney at Law Gunraj once again? The urgency of this engagement is occasioned by a series of events that have occurred overnight and as late as this morning. That is to say, overnight we observed in the official Gazette a publication from the Ghana Elections Commission in relation to the claims and objections period that is slated to commence on the 1st of October 2019 with a view of holding regional general elections at the stipulated time. Now, let me deal with that publication in the official Gazette first. A perusal of the schedule, the second schedule of that order, which is dated the 26th of September 2019, and is issued under the hand of Justice Claudette Singh, Chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission. In the second schedule at three, it details the entirety of the claims and objections period to be from the 1st of October 2019 to the 18th of November 2019. A quick calculation of that period and the number of days that comprise the same will show that it comprises, a, uh, it contains a period of 49 days. It was widely reported in the press coming out of the statutory meeting of the Ghana Elections Commission on the, of Tuesday of this week that it was agreed by the Commission that the period to be allocated for claims and objections would be 35 days, and that period would commence from the 1st of October 2019. Now, I don't proclaim to be the best mathematician, but it does not require any superior mathematical skills to see, to see that 35 days from the 1st of October would lead you to the 4th of October with both days being inclusive. So from the outset, it is everyone's guess as to where this 49 day period ending on the 18th of November 2019 came from. But my observation or our observation of this publication did not, uh, we did not remain silent on it. This morning at the first opportunity, myself, and my fellow commissioner, Robeson Ben, who is with me today, 
engaged the chairman, Honorable Justice Retired, Madam Claudette Singh, on this issue. Because this order is issued under her hand. She undertook to us to investigate the circumstances which led to this publication, this erroneous publication, appearing in the official Gazette of Guyana. And as I am speaking that this is a publication in the official Gazette of Guyana, let me start by expressing my consternation that the official Gazette is considered to be notice to the world. It is a publication that in law is taken to be noticed to the world. And if the Guyana Elections Commission, which is responsible for this publication, will publish something so erroneous that will obviously engage the attention of all Guyanese and ostensibly the world, then why do we have to be faced with this? Can we, it only leaves us to imagine what happens with issues that may never see the light of day. But this publication in the official Gazette is not the only surprising thing that we have seen today. During the course of this morning, we were met with a press release under the hand of the public relations officer, Ms. Yolanda Ward, which was purportedly issued today, which says, GCOM's claims and objections exercise will commence on the 1st of October, 2019. This very press release repeats the erroneous dates that are included in the Gazette, but it goes further. It seeks to specify, in fact, in bold, during this exercise, every person whose name appear, and that I'm reading it as it is, uh, grammatical errors are not mine. During this exercise, every person whose name appear on the preliminary list of electors, PLE, must visit the registration office in their respective area with their national identification card. Okay, and so we are back. And just as we are about to wind down, I had a, a caller who called to say that on 101.1 FM, Malcolm, very popular, uh, talk show host, a uh, particular person was on, and he closed by saying, in this election, plenty of people can get beat up bad. And they were responding to what um, G Gan National Broadcasting Authority is doing to places like Freedom Radio and MTV. But that's all we have time for tonight, and we're going to be back here next Friday with another program of Whole No Bars. From all of us here, Kevin, and the crew at MTV, thanks for being part of our program once again. And we want to wish you well for the rest of this evening. Good night. <laughs>